What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Styles here. Happy Monday. You guys made it. In today's What's Live, no, in today's live video, um, I'm going to be by myself, obviously, as you guys can tell. I'm going to be doing a live Q&A. It's going to be a full packed video. I have a live Q&A, so I ask people on my social media, Instagram and YouTube, and also my Facebook groups, any questions that they had. So I will be getting to as many of those questions as I can get to, as well as if you guys have questions in the chat. And if you guys are watching this in the recording, feel free to leave those questions down below, and I will get to those as well. I have, I asked on my YouTube uh, page the other day, my community tab, I did two truths and a lie. And I keep forgetting to tell you guys which one is a truth and which one is a lie. So I will be telling you guys that today as well. And then today I released some mystery boxes. I got a palette. You can see a lot of it is back behind me that needs to be, um, listed that needs to be listed but it was a customer's return palette and so sometimes when things get returned they are soiled or have you know small little damages small and big and I put everything aside that had that tag on it and I didn't even really look at it I don't even want to deal with it so some of it may be salvageable and some of it not so much I haven't fully checked but today I'm going to share with you guys the a couple of the sneak peeks from there so you guys can see what would possibly be these are ones that are going to actually be in a mystery box whether or not it is in a mystery box that you guys would get not so sure. Um, but it'll kind of give you an idea. They are listed on Poshmark. The link for those are going to be down below. Bec the link for those are going to be down below. So you can purchase. There's eight available. The first four people to purchase off of Poshmark will get one extra item as well. On Poshmark, it is going to tell you all of the brands. So I'll show you some of the brands here. I know some of the brands are like Rag and Bone, Vince, Ink. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I have a list of all of the brands. Uh, there's like 44 items that I'm going to be selling. So all of the brands. But, um, ooh, good question, Melissa. Are they all tops? And Melissa's asking, are they all tops? Um, they are not. Probably a decent majority are top sweaters, but there's jackets in there. There's pants. I'll show you guys some today. There's a romper. There's dresses. It's a good majority, probably a little heavier on tops, um, but definitely a variety. So let's get into that, and then we, we will get into, I'll share with you guys the two truths and a lie, and then we'll get into questions. So I'm going to show you guys, these are five items. I have all 44 items on in a box, and I just pulled the top, five off of the top to show you. So this is, it's all going to be new with tags. Sometimes it's going to be like a Macy's or wherever it's from, um, like a re-tag, so not the original tag. This is DK, this is DKNY, and it's a like a full romper. Like it's actually kind of cute. Um, maybe I should look at what size it is. It's really cute. Um, and this one says, and guys, honestly, I didn't look. Some of them may be salvageable and some of them, this says it's broken or torn. Just looking at it, um, I don't see where the rip would be. So, um, Full disclosure, that's where we're at right now. If you guys are just jumping on, I'm doing mystery boxes. I had a customer return palette, and sometimes things come soiled and or torn, ripped, you know, that need to be fixed, and I just don't want to deal with it. So I'm doing mystery boxes. The mystery boxes are you get five items for $25. If the first four people to buy will get um, one extra item. So this is just a top. It is rag and bone. It feels it might be silk. Um, it's 100% silk. And I will tell you this one. I do know where this one was because I was like, oh, I can fix that. And then I know that I'm not going to. Um, so it looks like right here, it's supposed to maybe be like stitched, like cinched together right there. And it looks like it may have torn like just a little bit of the fabric. So if you're a seamstress, um, I mean, it's a rag and bone. It's a $275 top. <laughs> like, if you're a seamstress, um, or it may even be worth trying to take it to like a dry cleaner or something, 
like I said, I don't want to deal with it. Um, I'm, oh, we'll get into the announcement in a minute, but I just don't want to deal with that right now. It kind of goes into that. These are free people. They are leather free people. You can see new with tags. These say broken or torn. Um, and these do have a little bit of rip in the leather. I can see that right there. But even if you guys like upcycle or if you're a good seamstress, um, I don't know. I just, like I said, I don't want, I don't want to deal with it. Um, this is bar three. I thought this was so cute. I don't, this one does say it's broken or torn. Um, I don't know where that's at. <laughs> Some of them I could easily see it. Um, but it's a cute, it reminds me kind of of the eighties, right? Cause it has like this, it totally reminds me of the eighties with a sweetheart neckline. Um, but it's really cute. Size eight. You can also buy for yourself too, right? Size eight. Um, like I said, these may or may not be, I'm going to share five with you guys. These are just similar items. The full list of brands is going to be on Poshmark. I I'm not showing you everything. It is going to be a complete mystery box. Everything says that it's soiled or damaged. I don't know to what extent. Um, so it's buy at your own risk. And then this is Ink and Company. This one's really cute too. I would totally keep this for myself. It's just a long dress. It's a maxi all the way down. It is a maxi. Um, I don't know what's wrong with this one either. I don't see anything super obvious. So it might be like on an inside seam or something. I don't know. Um, so those are five items, similar items. So not tops. I don't think any of those were tops. Were they, Melissa? <laughs> um, I don't think any of those were tops. So those were the first five items that I got off the top. The full list of brands is going to be on my website or on my Poshmark. The link is down below. It's just my Poshmark closet and then filter by just in. I just listed them today. I think I've already sold one or two. So the first four people that buy one will get one extra item. Um, we do have a questions. Okay. So this is going to be a Q and a, if you guys are just popping on, if you do have questions, leave them in the chat. If you're watching this in the recording, leave them down below. I did ask pre questions on my social media. So I'm going to get to those ones first. Um, two things. So I did ask a, uh, on my community tab on YouTube, I asked, I usually have people here talking and it's kind of awkward guys <laughs> to do a live and talking to you guys via the chat without having anyone else on the video. Anyway, so on my community tab on YouTube, I did a two truths and a lie. And I haven't told you guys the answer yet. Not because I didn't want to. I just keep forgetting to. So the two truths and a lie. Two, I posted three things. Two of these are a truth. One of them are is a lie. And you guys got to decide. Um, so the three things is I've done a triathlon. I grew up in Florida and I've never seen Ghostbusters. 10% of you said a triathlon is a lie. 22% of you said I grew up in Florida is the lie. And 67% of you said I've never seen Ghostbusters is a lie. Is a lie. Uh, the lie is I've never seen Ghostbusters. <laughs> so I fooled you guys because the most of you guys thought that that was a lie. Um, I grew up and we never had a lot, a lot of TV. So I actually have not seen a lot of TV and movies pre like probably 97 maybe. Um, so there's a lot of like pop culture references that I really just don't get. All right, so let's go into the big announcement and then I will get into question and answers. Big announcement, dun da da da. Uh, I'm taking the summer off. I am not going to be doing, this is my last live before the summer. My children get out of school on Thursday and I don't want to have to be attached to YouTube for the summer. Honestly, this is why I do what I do is so that I can be available to my children. And so I'm taking the lives off. I will probably be scaling back on my YouTube content as well. I am going to really, really, really try to have at least one week weekly video, if not two throughout the summer, but the lives I'm going to halt. So this is my last live until the fall. Um, that's the big announcement, but I hope you guys all have a great summer. I am on my Instagram. I'm on my stories daily. So if you guys want to see what I'm doing this summer, um, I'm on reselling or not. I am on my stories daily. And if you have questions, I'm always available via DM on Instagram or leaving comments here on YouTube, but that's a big announcement. I am not doing lives anymore. All right. So let's get to some questions. 
No Star Wars. Um, I do no. Yeah, Drunken Yoda. I've never seen a Star Wars. What's crazy is I don't know if you guys uh, have heard me reference my husband or not. Sometimes he's in the chat. He is like a super dork. Um, all the Star Wars he's seen, all the comic book, all, and I've never seen like any of them. Um, and even now he's like we should watch it together. And I'm like, I don't really want to, because I don't know if you guys have ever watched videos that were put out in the nineties and you didn't watch them in the eighties and nineties. They're kind of awful. <laughs> like if you watched them in the eighties and nineties, it, it was, you know, you were there and it was cool. And now you can, you can watch them over and over and over again. Cause you watch them when they first came out. But like, I tried to watch uh pretty in pink. I think it was cause everyone was like, Oh, pretty in pink. Sorry. I love it. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, it was cute, but like it was 80s. It was, yeah, it was not great quality. So no, I have not seen any of the Star Wars Drunken Yoda. I'm sorry. Please don't unsubscribe from my channel. Okay, so let's get into it. We already have some questions in the chat. I'm going to get to the questions uh, that were asked previously, and we'll try and get to the questions in the chat. So the first question was, will you buy another palette? And that's kind of a long story. So it's been almost a full year since I started purchasing palettes and I've probably already, I should know this number. Um, it's probably like eight or nine palettes that I have purchased to this point. I've done videos and I, I will, I have linked them actually in the description below knowing that this question was going to be asked about thrifted verse palettes. And I'll share my data with you guys as well. Um, so this is, if you're new to the channel, this is the Sarah style sales and trends dashboard. It is for sale. So you guys can have access to your data as well. And I'm going to scroll on down here and look at my sourcing. So over this past year, you know, 2020 was hard. Things got shut down right around this time last year. Normally this was thrift store and bins. That's the only places I was shopping at. These are all the new places that I've added. You can see down here, my palettes, um, a couple of them have like different initials with them just to kind of keep track of different types of palettes that I purchased, how they're performing. Um, you can see my sell through rate for my palettes is it's around the same as what my thrift store and my bins are. I typically source thrift stores. I don't even really like doing the bins because if you look over here, my bins profit is my lowest profit. Um, so I really don't source the bins. I'm mostly a thrift store shopper. Uh, but so my sell through rate is about the same. If you're new to the channel, sell through rate is I'm looking at one year period. So with sell through rate does matter depending on the time period you're looking at. So I'm looking at one year over the course of a year. Uh, let's say for the thrift store, 56% of the items that I purchased at a thrift store sold down here, 60% from a pallet, 58% from a pallet, 49% from a pallet. This pallet was probably a more recently purchased pallet, 62%. So my pallet items are selling, selling the same as a thrift store. But if you come over to this chart in the middle, my profit isn't the same. I have a lower profit. So my thrift store profit is roughly $29. So this is going to be taking out my cost of goods for my average uh, sale price for my thrift store. A thrift store, I can go in and pick exactly what I want to do. If you're new to my channel, I do lots of videos on this, but I look at my data, I go to categories that I know are gonna sell well for me. I know my brands, I know everything. And I only pick items that I know are really going to give me that average sale price. In a palette, even though I buy manifested, so manifested is going to be, I have a spreadsheet of everything. Before I purchase it, I can look at the spreadsheet and see everything that's in it. But even to that extent, they put stuff in there, right? Um, they may have, you know, 10% of, you know, rag and bone and like all of these really nice things. Um, and then they throw in some lower end items. So if you come down here, you can see $21 average sale or $21 profit, $11 profit, $26 profit. So my profit is less, but it's selling through the same. So that was long winded to tell you what I'm going to do. I will continue to buy them because it's bulk items that come to me. It makes it so I don't have to source. I only have time. I only make time, honestly, to source twice a month. Um, and having the palette come to me means that I can continue to list 10 items a day. However, thrifting does give me the better profit. So I am definitely, as things are opening up, I'm out there thrifting a lot more than I was in years this past year when things were closed down. So I hope that um, answered it. What do you do with stale inventory? Um, so this is a great, great question. And 
guys. I'm going to go back to my data. So I follow my data. I run sales on eBay based off of my data. And if you come up here, you can look at my categories and you say in the past year, what these are my categories, my average days on hands. On average, my tops are selling in 65 days. On average, my bags are selling in 113 days. I go into eBay and if things are passed, you can filter by category and then you can filter by days on site. This is one reason that I don't do a lot of sales similar because then the days on site would be a new day on site. But the, uh, sorry, I keep checking in with the comments and then I lose my chain of thought, guys. So, oh, the days on hand. So I go in, I don't do sell similar because then the days on site is from when you start it over again. But I go in and I run sales based off of my average days on hand. If tops are, if I have tops and they, I've had them for longer than that 65 days, they go on a sale. If I've had them significantly longer than that 65 days, I mean, I have items that are on a sale for up to 65%. I would rather sell it on eBay, even if it means that I'm not making like if I end up being net neutral and I end up just making what I paid for it, it still is a sales boost on eBay and I've still taken the time to photograph it and list it. So I really do try and sell it as much as I can by discounting it down, discounting it down and running sales on eBay. But if it gets to the point and it's mainly driven by how much space that I have, I um, work out of my house and I only have so much space. I do everything, all of my inventory is in sequ sequential order. And so the bins, these bins actually right here, these are my oldest bins. And so in theory, once a month, um, that's not, I'm trying to get in the habit, but in theory, once a month, I take one or two of those bins and I will go through it and say, hey, I really do think this needs a little bit more time or I will take it out and either, I actually don't take it to a buy, sell trade. It doesn't tend to be worth it for me. I end up donating it to, there is a nonprofit here local to me and all of their clothing, they give all their, their clothing to children in our school district that need it. So if it hasn't sold, I end up donating it, donating it there and then put it into my donations in my financial reporting. So I hope that answered that question. Let's see. What is your process for a VA? So this is longer than the video <laughs> will have. However, there is a link down below that I did with Denali. I did a live with her and we talked about a VA for a while. And then at the end of the live, I do kind of go through my process a little bit. However, it is on my agenda. One of the things that I'm hoping to do a series um, this summer, hopefully in July, I can get it out to you guys, a series of my processes. So I'm hoping to do a uh, I'm going to push out a three-part series and I'll go through how I take my photos. I do photos, measurements, photos, measurements. I weigh it, I skew it, and I put it away in under two, two minutes an item. So it allows me to take pictures of 70 items in roughly three hours. So I really only have to work three hours a week and then shipping because I have a lister. That's how I do my reselling. Um, that's how I do it in such a minimal time because my processes, right? So the first one is going to be photos. The second one is going to be listing, i.e. a VA. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. Here's what my photos look like. Here's how I export them. Here's how I send them. So definitely uh, subscribe if you guys are really interested in the step-by-step -step of that. Essentially, the process for a virtual assistant is I go to Upwork, I find someone, I put them onto my eBay permissions. They do not have access to my account. I take photos, I put them in a folder and I zip them email to the person because it's significantly faster than uploading them to List Perfectly or eBay or a Google Drive. It takes me like, 30 seconds to zip a file and email it. And then they do the entire listing. I will review it before I launch it. And that's it in a nutshell, but it is much more detailed than that. So I will be doing a series on that as well. <laughs> Whew. I am talking a mile a minute. <laughs> I want to try and get it all in for you guys. Um, I do want to say, because I've had a couple of people comment that I talk too quickly and I'm not trying to rush through videos. This is my natural speed. <laughs> you can ask my husband, but there are settings on YouTube that you guys can do that slows me down. Or if you are like, Sarah, get to the point, you can also speed me up um, and listen to it. You know, if I have a 10 minute video, you can listen to it in five minutes. Okay. Next question is, how long has your hair been pink? 
Great question. Love it. Uh, my hair has been pink this time for probably about two and a half years. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, I am growing out the mohawk. Uh, I have, oh, I love getting, uh, I just got an offer on eBay while I'm on here with you guys. I love that. Um, I have been, I'm growing out the mohawk. So I don't know if you guys follow on my Instagram. I share more there, but I have been struggling with eczema and rosacea and allergies and the skin or the hair products that I'm using are not really friendly to my skin. While I don't think that that's the reason that I'm having these issues, I don't think it's going to hurt. So I am um, growing out my mohawk mostly because I just can't really style it like that anymore because I can't use the products anymore. But it's been pink for about two and a half years. I might keep it pink, but I also might go back to like a deep red, like a deep brown red. I know. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. I, if you don't know, I went to school to be a hairdresser in high school. So I've had every color. I've had pitch black all the way to platinum blonde, red, black, orange, pink, all of the colors. I've had all of them in there. So I had pink in high school. I think my prom, maybe I had pink hair. Um, next question is what reselling tasks do you personally do and what tasks do you outsource to be the most productive? So I, I've kind of tried to outsource a couple of things, honestly, to kind of see how they work. So I currently, as of right now, I outsource listing I'm and cross-listing and updating my dashboard, which is all encompassing listing in, from my perspective. So I have two virtual assistants. I have two in case like someone gets sick or, um, you know, something happens. I am not like, ah, I'm completely out of a VA that happened to me a couple of months ago when my original VA said, Hey, my full-time job is getting really busy and I don't have time to help you out anymore. And I didn't have a VA and it was like super stressful for like a month as I was trying to keep up on the listings and find someone new and train them. So I now have two VAs for that reason. So they do the listing. I send them the photos. They create a draft in eBay. And for the most part, I don't change much. Uh, just a quick review because they are still kind of new. My old VA, I didn't check anything, honestly, um, and launch it. And then they do, one of them does cross list the eBay over to Poshmark. And then they update as they are going through and creating the listing, they're updating my Sarah Style Sales and Trends import file. So that data that I showed you, you have to have data to put into it. Uh, so they keep track of all that data for me in the spreadsheet. And then well, twice a week, one of the VAs will go through and update all of my solds. So the... The one that we looked at actually hasn't been updated in a couple of days because he, uh, I think he'll update it today probably. So it hasn't been updated in a couple of days. I have tried outsourcing photographing. The thing that I have found with photographing, I don't think that I'm very good at it. Um, but the couple that I've outsourced, I think because they're not quite as invested in it, it's, they're not bad, but like the hanger is a little crooked or like the sleep. I don't know. They're just not fantastic. And I really feel like the photo, because you're selling online, that photo has to be on point. Um, and it's not something that like, if I pay a lister and I have to go in and change the price a little bit, or I have to go in and like change a keyword, that's not a huge deal. But if I'm paying someone to take all the photos for me and they're not doing a good job, I have to go back and take all the photos again. Um, there's no like easy way around that, right? Uh, so that didn't end up being worth it for me, but I did try. I have paid and this is worth it. I might start doing this again because COVID is, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. My husband is, uh, my oldest son is because it's 12 and up now. Uh, my littles aren't though. So I, I'm still a little cautious about people coming into our house. But in the past pre-COVID, I did have someone come over and clean. Um, I don't do a lot of cleaning, but there's probably about an hour a week of, you know, just taking tags off. Um, and now that I do pallets, you have to like take security, like the security tags that they keep on and, you know, just little things like that. And so I might consider having someone do that again. I am in the process of training someone to ship, not on a daily basis, but to ship. So when I go on vacation, they can come to my house and ship. And so I don't have to go on vacation mode. That's my theory. It's not working out great so far. <laughs> She's a teenager. Um, it, it, she's great. She's a teenager, but she's in school during COVID. And so 
like two weeks ago, she had been exposed. So she had a quarantine for 14 days, which was actually two weekends. And then yesterday, my daughter had a fever um, and she's fine today. And we took a COVID test, but so then she couldn't come yesterday. So she's really only come a couple of times. It's just been really hard to coordinate because she's a teenager in school and then COVID and getting shut down and all of that. Um, so I do want to jump in the chat. I feel like I'm just rambling here. Um, thanks guys for joining. We do have a questions. I will get to your questions. Hey, Kathy, Ginger Marvin's here. Great channel. They put out like almost daily, right? Like it feels like a ton of mostly what sold and, you know, um, more vlog style ish, but lots of great information that you can le learn from them. They just kill it on the resale. And Larissa is here. Hello. I may have to buy one. So referencing the mystery boxes because I'm totally okay salvaging something if I'm getting it for myself. Valid point. There's some really cute stuff in there. Um, and like I said, some of like a couple of the items that I showed you guys, I don't really know, like whatever is broken or worn or soiled isn't easily standoutable, if that's a word. Um, so, oh, I'm doing great things. Um, another questions, we'll get there in a minute. I sold one third of my shoe palette and I've made my money back for sure, but I wouldn't do it again. That's interesting. Um, it's definitely not, I talked about this, if you guys are just hopping on, I talked about this a few minutes ago. Um, I don't think I would only do it. My thrifting is significantly, is definitely much better. It allows me to be more of a volume game for sure. I really like the pink. It looks so good with your beautiful eyes and your complexion. Well, thank you. This complexion is false. <laughs> <laughs> it's a makeup complexion. Um, if you guys want to see what my skin really looks like, I mentioned a minute ago that I have eczema and rosacea. I posted in my stories today. Um, it's not this pretty. <laughs> it is not great. Um, hello, call it favor. If you guys don't follow her, she's a high schooler um, doing reselling and just totally killing it. And it's about to be summer. So I'm hoping you're going to put out lots of content, lots of good reselling. So all right, next question is, um, okay, how do you decide what you cross list between eBay and Poshmark? What is your cross listing strategy? So I have linked a couple videos down below because I've gone in depth with this. Those of you who follow my channel, those of you who do not follow my channel, I follow data. I only, my strategies all come from data-driven strategies and I will share those with you via my YouTube videos. Um, so those links are down below. So let's give a little backstory. I was strictly a Poshmark seller, mainly a Poshmark seller. When I first started, I started eBay and I was like, I can't do all this. My kids were still little, little. Uh, and so then th roughly this, no, at the beginning of last year, December, December of 2019, we'll just say January, 2020, cause that's easier. January, 2020, I kind of noticed that no matter what I do, and I've done a video on this on Poshmark, no matter what I do, I cannot make more than $2,500 on Poshmark. I've gone from 100, 100 items in my closet to almost 1,000 items in my closet. I send out, I've done it all. I, I've done bundle strategies. I've done closet clear out. I have sent out 15 minute offers. I've sent out free shipping. I've sent, you, try, you name it, the strategy. I have tried it. I've likely also done a video on it. Um, and no matter what I did, I simply could not make more than $2,500. And so this is kind of where I decided in 2020 pre pandemic that I was going to really start to learn eBay. Um, and so I really put in the effort on eBay and it took me about eight months to really get consistent on eBay and actually get to where eBay was outperforming Poshmark. And so after that point, I, um, after that point, I did an analysis. Once I really got steam on eBay and I was like, okay, eBay is actually, it's at least competing with Poshmark. I've done a couple of analysis since, um, and I'm constantly looking at it and talking about it. And I'll show you guys right now. Uh, my eBay, let's get down to eBay. So we're looking at a year's worth of data just for a perspective. Um, but if you guys are new to the dashboard, you can come up here and change it. You can look at like your current 28 days, like a rolling month, and then you can come down and look at any month that you want. I look at a year for stuff like this um, because it's gonna kind of <laughs> squash seasonality or any outliers and give me like a really good set of data. But different things you wanna look at, different, uh, different and analytics, you wanna look at different days or different, 
time periods. Okay, so we are looking at my Sarah style sales and trans dashboard. This is the platforms. Like I said, I did link videos down below where I really go in depth into this, but you can see my all time top performing platform is eBay. I've made the most money on eBay, even though I've been on eBay probably only a year now and Poshmark for like two and a half years. I've sold the most items on Poshmark because I've been on there the longest. So what this tells me is, and we'll look at it in a minute, but if I'm making more money on eBay, but I'm selling more on Poshmark, I'm not selling very high items on Poshmark. I should, if I'm selling more quantity there, I should have more revenue as well. So revenue to me, like that's what speaks to me. I don't want to sell a lot. I want to sell a lot of money. My average sale price, highest average sale price is Etsy, which I don't actually do anymore. Um, minus my dashboard, but this is only reselling. This doesn't have my analytics dashboard in it. So we're looking at a year. You can absolutely see that eBay, this is year over year, is absolutely outperforming Poshmark. I mean, hands down, it's like three times the amount. But what I look at is my cost of good or my average sale price. My average sale price is, I mean, it's almost was it eight dollars higher? Um, and then you say, hey, there's fees, there's shipping, blah, 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 Sarah, right? So come over here and we take all of that out. Uh, my profit is still, you know, a, a dollar eighty-eight. Well, this is fifteen twenty-three and this is sixteen eighty-eight. So my profit on eBay is still higher. Um, and something I'm gonna do this because it is gonna matter. I've been working really hard at getting my fees down. That's something on eBay you can do is you can get your fees down to a certain extent. Um, you can get your fees down and you can see here. So I just did it to the past 28 days. My profit on eBay is double what it is on Poshmark. So why am I showing you this? There was a question <laughs> and I go into detail in this, but my strategy is eBay is my main boo. eBay, my sell through rate, I didn't show you guys that, but my sell through rate on eBay is better and my average sale price is better. So everything goes on eBay first. It's probably about two months ish before I move it over to Poshmark and Poshmark essentially now is becoming my clearance center. I also did a video. I don't think I put this down below. Let me make a note because after this video, I will put it down below. Um, I also did a video on something else. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Um, oh, closet size. So I also did a video on closet size. Let me write this down. So I also did a video on Poshmark closet size. And something that I noticed is as my closet grew, my sell through rate on Poshmark went down. And if you think about it, I did a full analysis based off of numbers. I, I will link it down below after, but I did a full analysis. And, but if you guys really think about it, like Poshmark, you have to share your closet. You have to send offers one by one. You have to closet clear out one by one. And so the more items that you have, the harder it is to make that sale, right? If you have a hundred items, you could share that every hour if you wanted to. I think Poshmark would probably shut you down eventually because they don't like you to share that much, but that's feasible. If you have a thousand items, you cannot share every hour. There's no way. Um, even if you had a bot, you probably couldn't share every hour. So your items aren't getting as much visibility. Same with offers. If you have a hundred items, you could go through and send offers you know, you could probably send offers for the day in 30 minutes. If you have a thousand items, it's going to take you hours. So that is kind of the two reasons that I have. I put things on eBay first, and then I like to try and keep my Poshmark closet around 500, where my eBay is closer to like a thousand, 1100, I think right now. Um, so that's where we are there. I think those are all the questions I had. Yes, those are all the questions that I had. If you guys do have questions, uh, oh, we do. We're doing good on time. Thankfully, I talk quickly. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you guys a question because I'm interested to know your answer. Um, this weekend was probably one of my worst sales weekends in a long time. Um, so I'm wondering if you guys were noticing the same. I think that it has to do with it has been gorgeous here. Spring is officially here in Colorado. We haven't had snow in like a week or two. Um, very little, a little rain, but not bad. Like we were actually able to be outside all weekend, minus the fact that my daughter had a fever. So Sunday we didn't really go anywhere, but we could have had she not had a fever, um, been outside. So I think people were just outside and our, we're basically back to normal-ish. Uh, definitely, you know, normal compared to last year. Most things are opened up. People are out and about doing things. So I think that really has to do with why my sales were so much slower. But I'm interested to hear um, how you guys were doing as well. 
So let's take a look. Are they all taught? Oh, that was about the mystery box. So how many items do you recommend recommend posting daily? Um, so this is kind of a two part answer. One. Okay. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this way first. So one, I recommend you figuring out how much money you want to make. <laughs> um, and we'll come into the Sarah Sal's analytical dashboard. So you can say here, Hey, I want to increase to 10,000 gross revenue. You can make this any amount that you want. Or I have other videos, you know, walking you through how to figure this out using the golden formula for resellers. You can kind of work your way backwards. Um, figure out like how much do you want to make, right? So if you want to make $500, your listing habit is going to be different than if you want to make $10,000, right? Your listing habits are going to be different. Figure out what you want to make and figure out those strategies and then what I recommend doing is once you figure out what you want to make is figure out how to get what Chris at a daily refinement calls reseller nirvana. Um, and it's basically where you get to a point where what you are listing is the same amount as what you're selling. So you can see here I'm on March, the month of March for whatever reason, but I sold 280 items and I listed 290 items. I mean, that's a 10 item difference, but that's basically <laughs> that reseller nirvana. But this is not easy to do. This takes a lot of knowledge and strategy to figure out how to get to a point of how many you put in is how many you put out. So this is why it's a two part answer is figure out how much money you wanna make and work backwards. That'll kind of tell you how much you need to list and then focus on this. If you want to sell, I mean, I'll do a scenario. Like for me, I want to make $10,000. Essentially, it means that I have to sell roughly, I don't know. <laughs> I can't do the math quickly in my head. Um, but just work backwards and figure out how many items you want to sell for the month. That's essentially how many items you need to be listing for the month. If, and then break that into 30 days, give or take, you know, the month that you're in. Um, if, I was gonna say something. If you are listing more items that you're selling, you gotta figure out what's up. You are not buying things that people want. You are listing them too high. You are, maybe you need to be running sales. You need to get better exposure. Maybe you need to be cross-listing, lots of different reasons. But this is something I am constantly watching because if I, if you're listing 50 items a day, but you're only selling 10 of those, something's wrong. And then the second part of this is, you gotta figure out your lifestyle too. Um, what can you realistically list daily long term? Right. I did a video, I'll put this, I'll put this in the comments down below. Um, I coined it, I call it banking. I, I just kind of made it up, but how I, I started this about this time last year, maybe a little bit earlier, and I was listing roughly like Poshmark doesn't really care. eBay cares a little bit more. And I was only seeing like five items today and then two items tomorrow and then 10 items one day. And so what I really started doing is banking and getting consistent. Okay, I can do five items a day. I do five items a day. Anything over those five items a day, I put into my bank. And once I did that consistently for a month, I was like, okay, cool. Once I did it consistently for a month and once this chart showed me, hey, you're list selling the same amount that you're listing. Cool, let me go up to six items and go up to six items, any listings that you have over those six items, put them into your bank. So then in three days, when your kid gets sick and you don't have time to be able to list an item, you have six items in your bank and you can consistently do that. That's kind of what I recommend doing because you wanna stay consistent. And even if it's two items a day, but you can do it consistently, you're going to see results um, and then slowly start to move yourself up and then work backwards mathematically to figure out how much money you want to make. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have follow-up questions, definitely let me know, or if you need more details, you can send me a DM as well. Do you recommend posting everything you have or only what you think you can sell? Why would you have something that you didn't think could sell? Um, I mean, maybe like a donation, like I don't buy things that I don't think are going to sell. So the only thing from my perspective I can think of is like a donation and I don't, I don't, time is money. I am not, I'm not going to, if I was in a position where I didn't have the inventory, possibly, uh, but time is money and I have inventory. Why am I going to 
yes, it's a lower cost of good, but if it's making me $2 or something that's making me $30, $40, $50, $60, I'm going to choose the stuff that's going to make me more money. Um, so yeah, if I get stuff donated, I had a reselling friend. She got a bunch of stuff donated to her. She gave me, cause she doesn't sell a lot of the same stuff. She gave me the bag as well. Um, there was probably my whole entire van was full. So there was probably like 30 large trash bags. That top row right there where, how do we go? This top row right here, that's all that I kept. And I donated everything back to the Goodwill or either to that nonprofit. Um, because time is money. I'm not going to spend my money doing things that aren't making me money. All right. Do make sure to leave those questions down below if you guys do have them. Okay. How do you store your unlisted inventory, particularly your pallets? So here you go. <laughs> this is my unlisted inventory. Um, it's for these bins right here and up here, right up here. This is my unlisted inventory. Um, so I have, let me see if I can find a tab for you. I don't have one, but I have, I have, I keep very organized. So everything is in like this stuff is all donated. Wait, it's kind of hard. <laughs> I can't do it. This top rack right here is all donated. It has a sticky note on it, donated how much I paid for it because I track all of that for our finances um, and just to kind of, and for my sales and trends dashboard. So this is typically donated, this rack is typically donated or thrift store items, shoes and purses, cause they can kind of just sit on a rack. And then my palette, I have three, there's one more back there, but I have three racks. So here's one, I'm backward guys. <laughs> so this is kind of hard. And here's one, so I have three racks and I hang as much as I can. And then you can see down here is right here. Can you guys see it right here? <laughs> It's backwards. Uh, right here is all of my pants. Um, eventually I will fold those nicely and kind of put them all together. I store it also by season because I can't list this. I mean, I probably have like 550 items behind me. This is a little bit more than normal because I am going to be taking the summer a little easy. So I know I will not be sourcing as much. I'm kind of, I have a lot of stuff. So if I have time to list, I don't have to go out and source it. But I do it by season because right now I want to be listing all of the summer things. So I have tops. Nope. Right here. Right here. <laughs> I have you can you, I don't know if you can tell, but these are like all sh short sleeves. This is mainly uh, like dresses and lightweight stuff. And then the rack behind it is like all winter stuff. Um, I hope that made sense. And I am going to do a processing video, but I mentioned this in the processing video. I have filmed them. I just have to edit them and upload them, which could take a while. Uh, um, I mentioned in there that I do, I do get a lot of, like I will usually go to the thrift store two or three times before I actually start listing it because I like to get a lot of shoes and take all my shoe pictures together and get a lot of jeans and take all my jean pictures together. So I do sort it kind of by like items as well. So when I take photos, it cranks out a little bit more as well. All right. Anyone else have questions? Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, let me know how you like this. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for my lives in the fall. Uh, it feels kind of awkward standing here ta <laughs> talking to you guys. Um, it's much easier to do a live when you're talking with someone else, but if you guys like it, um, I, I mean, I'm definitely game if you find that there is value in this. Um, I'm not computer savvy at all, but want to get your dashboard. How easy is it to plug in my numbers and can I do it anytime after purchasing or just the once? Hmm. Excuse me. Great question. So I have three dashboards available. Two of them are strictly for Poshmark. So on Poshmark, you can export your sales and trends dashboard. It comes in a CSV file, which is just like a raw data file. You copy that, you paste it, and you put it in and all of your numbers populate. Uh, you have to like log in and that's it. Um, but that's it. And you can do it. You have that dashboard forever. And so you can do it as many times as you like. You can do it and save it. Say, hey, I'm going to do it every single month and I'm going to save it off. So I have records of everything. You can do it for a week. You can do it for an entire year. You can, and, and this is why I did it this way is I want you to try things. I want you to say, Hey, I'm going to try a new offer to like strategy. Let me look at this month of data, save it off. Let me look at the next month when I do this offer to like strategy, save it, and then compare the two. Did it actually do anything for me? Um, so you can run it as many times as you want. Those are the two Poshmark ones. They are reports that you pull out of Poshmark. Um, so that one is 
very easy. This is a sales and trends dashboard. This is the one that I show the majority of the time on my channel, just because this encompasses if you sell on more than one platform, which obviously I do. Um, this one, I think is still easy. Um, I try and make it really easy. The only thing with this one is because you're selling it on multiple platforms, it's not just one report that you can pull because there's like 25 different platforms. I can't make it custom to all the different platforms and all the different platforms that are to come. And then eBay changes their reporting. Um, so that part, tracking and managing your data is going to be on you. However, it's just entering data into a spreadsheet. Um, and I'm I can help you figure out where to find this information if you need it. Um, but you just go in and this is what I have my, one of the things I have my VAs do when something gets listed, the data that was listed, the title, the brand, the size, the SKU number, the listing price, and then what category it is, where I purchased it, what the cost of good what what the cost of good was, costs of good, cost of goods, jeez. Um, and then these blue ones are things that get updated when it's sold. So I also have my VA, but I was doing this before. Every day when I shipped, I would update this after I shipped it um, and just got in the habit of it. You know, it takes like 30 seconds an item. Um, this is where a SKU number is very helpful to look things up, but when something sells, you just enter in this information and then this just feeds right into all of this data and analytics. So I don't think that you have to be very, um, computer savvy. I also have a Facebook user group that you can ask questions in there. I'm also available um, to ask questions as well. If you have other questions, I hope that gave you a good understanding, but if you have other questions, um, definitely let me know. Is it best to specialize in niche or sell as general store on eBay? Thank you. First year channel. Oh, well, hello, Frank. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so I think this is going to matter. It's just going to depend. I think some of it depends on obviously the inventory that you have available. <laughs> um, if you can't find a niche down inventory, I mean, you have to first start with what you have available to you. Also, your knowledge base. My perspective on niching down is, and I will talk about this in my July series about how niching down can really help you. What it's helped me do, if you're niched down, I'm niched down into women's clothing and the majority of what I do um, is like when I thrift, I only look at shoes, purses and jeans. And then sometimes I'll find another random thing, but that's all I look at. And then my palettes, I can't be that specific, but it's all women's. What it helps you do is it helps you become quicker in your processes, which means that you can become more efficient. If you went from listing 10 items a day or yeah, if you went from listing 10 items in an hour and you get niched down and you can now list 20 items in an hour, you're going to make more money. And niching down is one of the ways that you can really do that. Because if you're taking photos of all the same item, your setup's the same and you kind of get them in a rhythm. And if you like when I take jeans, I can crank through it because I've been doing it for so long. I know what measurement I know what like I can even do it when a kid's crying like, mom, come help me. You know, I could still walk through it. Obviously, I would stop and go help them. But, um, you know, I can do it mindlessly because I, I know all of the measurements that I knew. I know all the pictures that I take. If you do one offs, you spend a lot of time making sure that you take pictures of everything, setting your lighting and setup, and then researching. You do a lot of researching when you're sourcing to figure out if it's something that you want. And you do a lot of researching to list it, to figure out how to list it, you know, what to call it, what keywords you need. It, like for jeans example, I can go through the jeans at a thrift store in 10 minutes and know which ones I want. Maybe I'm going to look up one comp. Um, but when, if I was selling a bunch of stuff, I didn't know I would be spending a lot of time. So I hope that helps. It didn't really answer. I think you can <laughs> make money both ways, but if you're going to do more one offs, I think you definitely need to have a much higher average sale price because you're probably not going to be able to do a volume in that, if that makes sense. Um, which dashboard did you just show where the numbers matched Where the numbers match? The only dashboard I have up right now is my, this is a sales and trends dashboard. Um, so this allows up to 25 platforms that you sell on. Um, this is the only one in this video that I've looked at is the sales and trends dashboard. I don't have the Poshmark one pulled up. Um, I really only look at the Poshmark one if I'm doing like a Poshmark specific strategy. 
I recently started taking eBay seriously and doing good. Would you recommend cross-posting all my posh items on eBay all at once without banking to increase listing amount? Um, probably. Are you? Do you have good listing habits? I mean, if you have good listing habits, and it also depends, <laughs> right? The thing with eBay is they definitely want you in it. Oh, you guys don't need to see this anymore. Sorry. Uh, eBay wants you in it for the long game. So if they see you cranking out listings and you list, you know, 500 in a month and then you don't list anything for a month, they're not going to appreciate that. Um, and so I kinda, it kind of just depends. If you have good listing habits anyways, I would say get it all in there, um, but then continue to list in the same-ish listing habit. Uh if that makes sense. Um, I wouldn't, if you, if all the inventory that you have is on Poshmark and you don't really list and you need to find time to like get into a good routine with listing, then I would say to do it um, kind of in the banking, but do like 10 a day on Poshmark or five a day from Poshmark to eBay and kind of just get consistent. eBay wants to know that you're in it for the long haul. Um, so if you do, if you kind of do erratic behavior, I don't think that they necessarily like that. <laughs> Where do you get your inventory? I can never find so many items. Um, so this is all, this is donated. This is all thrift store. I source roughly two times a month for about three or four hours. And I get probably in a month thrifting. Thrifting is not as good as it used to be. It's getting better. Uh, normally I used to get like a hundred items in a three hour trip thrifting. Um, now it's probably closer to like 60 or 70 items. So that's roughly like 120 to 140 items a month, strictly from thrifting. And then all of this stuff here, and then most of the stuff down here is from a palette. So the last palette, liquidation palette I purchased was like 450 items. Um, so part of that is finding part of doing the liquidation palette is to keep it so that I can do more volume and list a lot of items. Um, but as shown in the earlier in the video, I do lose some quantity because of that or quality because of that, because you don't get all great items. Thrifting, I mean, almost every single, every single item here has a high average sale price, or if it has a low average sale price, it has a great sell through rate. Um, where do you shop for your inventory? I'm in Colorado. Uh, so I, um, most, we have good thrift stores, Denver Metro. I've heard we have really good thrifting. Here's the thing. And I've done quite a few videos. I call them how to make 10 K because it's, you know, flashy and people will click on it, but you can enter, you know, how to make 500. The theory is all the same. Um, where I walk you through, if you can't find great inventory, if you can't find inventory, that's going to sell, you know, for $50, you can still make money selling items for $5. You just have to have a killer sell through rate, right? You're the golden formula for resellers is what I talk about. There's three variables. You have your active, you have your sell through rate times your active listings. And I have videos on this and I, you know, it's live, so I can't show a graphic because I didn't I don't have it available with me right now, but you have your sell through rate times your active listings. That's how much you're selling. You times that times your average sale price. That is how much you're making, how many items you're selling times how much that you're selling them for. That gives you your gross revenue. If your average, if your average sale price is low, you just need to increase your sell through rate to make sure that you're making more money if that makes sense. So if you don't have access to, you know, super luxurious or really high average sale price items, you just have to find items that are going to in and out. And then I would really recommend working on processes. If you're going to be playing the volume game, you need to be really good at listing quickly because you're going, you're going to have to be moving inventory. You're going to have to be listing it, photographing it and shipping a lot of it to be able to make that money. Um, yes, this is a huge time saving tip, no matter what you're, I mean, definitely in a mannequin. Um, but with anything, like I have a stand to sit desk, which is amazing. Uh, but cause I have a bad back. And so when I'm do jeans, I do it at a certain height. So I don't have to lean over as much. And when I do shoes, I do it at a certain height. So I can just take the photos like this. And when I do hanging stuff. And so even 
switching in between all of those. Okay. It only takes me 30 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, seconds add up to minutes, minutes add up to hours. You are wasting hours, um, just doing those little things, right? I have a VA listing. Nice. Nice. Uh, Frank, men don't return clothing nearly as much as women, but they also don't buy as much clothing as women. They also like tinkering in the garage sort of things. Perfect for eBay and Mercari. Yes, this is very valid um, because let's see, I'm looking at men's store clothing and jeans. I don't know anything about men, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so definitely you have to stick with what you know. I can't make any recommendations there. I can tell you how to look at your numbers and I can help you figure out what is working or how to figure out what you need to do um, to get to where you need to go from a numbers perspective, from a what brand of jeans you should be buying for men. Rock Revival. I know that one. <laughs> Someone gave me that for free. That's the only one I know. All right, we are getting to about that hour, um, and it's beautiful out. I'm going to go spend some time with my family. So if you guys do have any more questions, do leave them in the comments. Uh, if you guys are watching this in the recording, feel free to drop those questions down below, and I will hit you back. If you want to just say hi, I don't. I appreciate it. If you're watching this in the recording, I love talking to the community. Guys, let me know who is joining us uh, in, in the live chat if you haven't said hello yet or in the... Uh, comments down below if you're watching this in the recording. Do you sell on Facebook Marketplace? Um, so I'm in the mindset of if you try too many different things, you can't master them. Um, there's different models and something different works for everybody. For me personally, I'm in the mindset that you you can't get really good at something if you're spreading yourself too thin. So what I do is master one platform, master to where I feel like on Poshmark, I was talking earlier in this chat, I got to a point and I just could not get any more. Um, so I moved to eBay, right? eBay's the biggest platform. <laughs> it made sense to move to eBay. I have, I'm not planning on moving to any other platforms really, because they do take more time, even with, um, certain softwares or for me it would be paying someone to do it honestly i pay my va to do it um and when i've done it in the past i'll show you because i did it last year during the pandemic i had nothing to list i had no new inventory because who knew there was going to be a pandemic <laughs> um and uh, let's see i did it let me look at a year so you can guys can see all the places i did try it a bunch of different places and to me Oh, this doesn't go all the way through because it's a little over a year ago now when I did it. Um, but like I tried tradesies. I tried a bunch of different places and I was making like a sale or two here. And that wasn't worth it to me. It was worth it to me to hone in and really understand and learn eBay. And to me, that worked out in my favor because now I am, I mean, I make between like six and 7,000 a month on eBay where Facebook, you get a couple, kid is in, you get a couple, and you like never really learn them all. Uh, so that's kind of been my strategy. Maybe once the kids are in school full time and I have a little bit of extra time, time's not on my side either. I don't have a lot of time. Um, oh, so the thing with Facebook Marketplace too is I don't know it and learn it. I've heard also that they're, I've heard that a lot of people are doing well, but I've also heard that they don't have, they're new. So they don't have everything in place. I definitely don't meet up with people. One, because, you know, I'm a female um, and I've had some sketchy things happen. Most people flake. And I also have little kids. Like my schedule, I, it's just not compatible for people who are like, oh, I'm going to be here at this time. And then they don't show up. And um, so I don't. But if people do, like there's nothing against it. I know there's a lot of people that definitely sell on like 15 platforms and kill it. I, it's too much for me. <laughs> I like to just really master one platform. Um, I am trying to choose a dashboard that would work great for me. Which one do you recommend? I have bought out three clothing stores and now have several thousand pieces of clothing. Woohoo. Um, it mainly depends on where you sell. If you are only a Poshmark seller, I think the two Poshmark ones. So there's a Sarah Sal's sales analytical dashboard and a Sarah Sal's inventory analytical dashboard. If you only sell on Poshmark, those are great dashboards. 
If you sell anywhere else and you are committed to tracking your data, you can't have, I say this, so the dashboards all come with a how-to video. You can watch as many times as you want. I walk step-by-step -step on a video of how to do it. And so then I say often in that, um, I have a degree in mathematics, so that it was said to me often too, and in my previous job, doing data analytics, uh, it was said to me trash in, trash out. So if you are not going to maintain your data and track and manage it, then the sales and trends one isn't gonna do you a whole lot of good because if you don't have good data, it's not gonna give you good analytics. If you are willing to, when you list an item, it goes into the spreadsheet. When you sell an item, it goes into the spreadsheet, then the sales and trends one, um, because that can go up to 25 different platforms. Uh, the shipping rates are a mess, completely inaccurate. Use pirate ship. For me, Macari, Posh, and eBay are where I'm selling. Yeah, and I think, I don't know, I think all of these new places, Facebook will probably, you know, flatten out. Like, it's new, so everyone's over there and they're doing, hey, no fees and free shipping and all of these things, but eventually they're going to want to make money, <laughs> right? Um, so I kind of choose the two biggest platforms that, like, eBay obviously is a big hitter. Um, Poshmark they're kind of going through things. I don't know if they're going to continue to stay a big hitter, uh, but definitely those two. Yes. So Judy, hello everyone. I'm retired and just selling on Poshmark because it's so much easier. Absolutely valid. <laughs> um, I did that for quite a while when my kids were so little and it was just, it was easy. I didn't have to worry about knowing all the things. Listing was easy. If I, if I lost an item, it wasn't a big deal. Um, so definitely there is a time and a place to do a Poshmark. So thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, if you guys missed the beginning, my big announcement is I am not doing lives during the summer. So I will not have a live next week. It is Memorial Day. So I probably wouldn't have anyway. So have a great Memorial Day. Have a great summer. I am still going to be putting out pre-recorded content. I'm just not doing these lives. I might jump on a random live here and there, but I'm just not going to have the scheduled lives. I am still going to do the pre-recorded. They may not be at the intensity. I think right now I'm doing like three videos a week, hopefully at least one a week, maybe two a week during the summer. I do this to stay home with my kids. And so I am going to be doing that. I'm going to be enjoying the summer with my kids um, and enriching and doing all of the stuff with them as well. So no more lives until the fall in there. They are back in school. Content will still be out there. However, I am on Instagram. Uh, if you guys have questions or want to chat or have a question um, or just you know want to see what I'm up to, I do post to my stories every day. Uh, probably won't be a ton of reseller content, maybe a little bit. Um, I mean, I'll still be shipping and I'll still be reselling, but uh, I won't be you know making content per se, just kind of, hey, this is my life that I'm doing right now. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram over there as well. I am doing mystery boxes. So I said, if you guys missed the beginning, you can head back to the beginning. I showed five items. I pulled them from the top. I bought a palette. So this palette behind me was customer returns. And sometimes in customer returns, people return things that have a stain on them or something's ripped or torn. Uh, so all of those items I don't want to deal with. I didn't even look to the extent of knowing what's wrong with all of them. So some of them may not even have anything really wrong with them, uh, but I am selling those in mystery mystery boxes. I showed five items I just pulled from the top of the box that I have them all in. I pulled the top five from there just to show you guys an idea of things that you might be getting. Um, and I don't think, I mean, one had like a little small rip on it and nothing too big. I think maybe one had a little stain. I don't remember. But if you guys do want a mystery box, they are on my Poshmark. They force first four people to purchase one will get one additional item as well. And that's it. I'm going to go have some lunch or dinner. It's dinner, dinner with my family and um, enjoy the evening. So I hope you guys do the same and have a good night.